Hello Space Nerds, welcome to another Space Nerds in Space update. Today is October 3rd, 2018 and let's get right to it. The first thing I want to tell you about is what I call the new Auto Wrangler system. What this does is automatically start and stop SNS server instances as necessary to give the illusion of a very large universe. Each solar system in the game is simulated by its own process, which is called SNS server. You can run several of these on one machine, say four or five of them but you cannot really run, say, a hundred or a thousand of these on a single machine. You could run them on separate machines, so if you wanted to set up a universe of a hundred solar systems, you could scrape together a network of 20 machines and make it happen. If you wanted a, multi, uh, a massive multiplayer experience with hundreds of crews in every solar system inhabited by these crews, then this is what you would have to do. And if all hundred of these crews decided to all pile into the same solar system at once, uh, yeah, performance would pretty much suck and it wouldn't work very well. But all this isn't very realistic because nobody's going to do that because, well, first, it's too expensive to get all those machines and second, most people can't even get five or ten people together to play this Entering game. Forget about area. hundreds. So you can just forget about this whole massively multiplayer system. That means that I had this other idea of this uh, auto wrangler systems which enables us to have a solar system or hundreds of solar systems without actually having to run them all at the same time. Um, we don't need to run them all at the same time. We only need to run the SNS server instances for the solar systems the players are actually currently in, and also those that they are immediately adjacent to, those that are reachable in a single warp gate hop. Any SNS server Starship instance destroyed. that is more Entering than one warp gate area. hop away from, the play from any player doesn't need to be run, and so we can shut it down. Uh, so if we only have one or two crews in the game, which is most likely, because how Moving are you going to get more than that area. many people together, um, then we can have this uh, SNS Multiverse program, which is responsible for allowing players to traverse from one SNS server instance to another, to also start and stop the SNS server processes as needed. That also means uh, if you want to run a multi-solar system game, you no longer need to manually start up all the SNS server instances you plan on using, you can just start up one and SNS Multiverse will start up all the others as needed. So that's pretty cool. The next thing I want to talk about is the ULIT models. Now, ULIT is another open source space game. It's a single player game that is heavily inspired by the original 8-bit classic Elite game. In any case, they have some pretty cool spaceship models but they're distributed in a format that is particular to Ulit. So I modified my model parsing code to be able to understand, mostly, the .dat files that Ulit uses. So now it is, in theory, possible to put in the Cobra Mark III from Ulit as a ship in Space Nerds in Space. I haven't made any commits to actually do that, to put their models into the game, uh, but it is possible. All right, the next thing I want to talk about is normal mapping. I have had normal mapping working for planets, for spheres, for quite a while now, but I haven't had it working for non-spherical models. This is for a couple of reasons. One being I'm not so good at modeling, so I'm not really even sure how to make a model with a normal map. The second reason is that in order to do normal mapping in the shader, it needs what are called tangents and bitangents in addition to the normal vectors at each vertex in the model. These tangents and bitangents are used by the shader to know the direction on the model that corresponds to the U and V axes on the normal map texture. If you didn't understand that last bit, don't worry. In any case, I borrowed some code from the Godot engine, which they borrowed from Morton S. Mickelson, who is a graphics programming god. I think he works for Unity nowadays. Um, to calculate those tangents and bitangents, and I modified the shader code to be able to use this to do normal mapping. So now all we need is some spaceship models that have normal maps, and we should have some cool-looking spaceships. Yeah, uh, all we need. Famous last words, right? Well, um, 
maybe somebody can contribute some models. There's that uh, Digital Ocean Hacktoberfest going on this month, so maybe there's a free T-shirt in in it for you if you uh, send a pull request, right? <laughs> okay. The next thing I want to talk about is the ship registration and bounty system. Now you can collect bounties on ships which have committed procedurally generated crimes such as murder or tax evasion or aggravated regicide or unauthorized loitering. Um, the way it's supposed to work is when you scan a ship from the science console you can now see a registration number which is kind of like a license plate number. Then comms can contact Starbase and query this registration number and find out things about the ship like make and model and who owns it and if there are any bounties on the ship and if there are any bounties where they can be collected. In order to collect the bounty you must destroy the ship and then you can send over your mining robot to salvage the wreckage and the mining bot can pry out the ship's ID chip and you can then take right this ID going. chip to the appropriate star base and turn it in to collect your bounty. I'm still working on this and there are a few bugs at the moment. For instance, wrecked ships currently have a finite lifetime after which they disappear and if a wreck disappears before the bounty is collected, the bounty disappears. So you may find you have collected a worthless ship ID chip if you can't redeem it at the correct star base quickly enough. So I need to fix that. It might also happen that a starbase that was offering the bounty gets destroyed before you can collect the bounty. I also think the wrecks are often moving too quickly so catching up the, to them to get close enough to launch the mining robot can take too long. Uh, there's some usability issues as well like the odds of mining are pretty low of by. scanning a ship finding it has a bounty that's offered at a nearby starbase. More likely there's no bounty or the bounty is redeemable at a starbase that's a zillion miles away so it's not worth it. So I got some work to be done but the bones of the idea are in there. Well that about does it for this time. If you want to be notified of more updates, uh, hit subscribe below. And if you'd like to support Space Nerds in Space development, head over to spacenerdsinspace.com slash donate.html. And that will take you to Patreon, and you can become a patron. Um, thanks a lot for watching. See you next time.